In this short presentation, I'm going to reflect on the work writing program administrators do and how institutional contexts shape our work and our identities. First, a little of my context. On August 2, 2011, President Obama signed the Budget Control Act to resolve the debt ceiling crisis. The act created a super committee that needed to reduce the federal deficit by $1.2 trillion over 10 years. If the super committee failed, sequestration would go into effect, cutting equal amounts from the defense and domestic federal budget. Few thought the super committee would fail, but it did. On March 1, 2013, sequestration hit. Dozens of federally funded programs were slashed, and the federal defense budget was cut by $42.7 billion. For many American civilians, removed from the military context, sequestration cuts seem nebulous. Just get rid of an F-16 or two. But the defense cuts were trickier than that. Military pay and military bases were exempt from sequestration cuts, so the Pentagon made up its $42.7 billion cut in other ways. Flight hours were scaled back so that crews were no longer combat ready. Routine maintenance was delayed. And the Department of Defense's civilian employees, including everyone from commissary workers to librarians, were furloughed. I was one of those furloughed civilians, paid 80% of my salary for 11 weeks. Under federal law, I could not work 100% of my job when I was only being paid 80%. Which made me think, how can I be an 80% writing program administrator? What gets cut out, lost, left behind? How do we quantify the work we do? In his book, Terms of Work for Composition, Bruce Horner discusses the division of labor between an academic's intellectual work, like their research, and their more institutionally grounded work, like their teaching or administration. Horner argues that metrics like credit hours and course loads turn academic work into a commodity that can be bargained for. These rudimentary measurements belie the truth, that good scholarship, good teaching, and good administration depend on material conditions. So what happens to my research when I may only clock in for 32 hours a week? What happens to my teaching? What happens to my first year writing program? Furlough law imagines labor as its least common denominator, hours on a time card. Unfortunately, how we imagine labor for many of our non-tenure track colleagues is the same, a set stipend per course taught. What are these calculations missing? I argue that these calculations are missing the harder to quantify activities that transform teaching to critical engagement, that transform administration to thoughtful leadership. Critical, engaged teaching and thoughtful leadership require reflection. Reflection emerges from activity and knowledge, and knowledge develops through scholarship, and we can't kid ourselves. This takes time. As a pre-tenured WPA, I work more than 40 hours a week. I must invest the time in my future and my profession. Teaching is more than having a warm body in the classroom. Administration is more than pushing paperwork. When I cut back to 32 hours a week, I stop doing the activities that have long-term importance and require lots of time, and instead only address immediate needs and concerns. Running on 80% robbed my daily work of an intellectual foundation, and this deprivation had a ripple effect on my teachers, my program, and our students. It also deprived me. Truly, who am I hurting but myself if I follow furlough law and only work at 80%? In our profession, I'm a fool if I don't stay productive, paid or unpaid. It's time that we are honest about the work we do. It's time that we argue for more complex calculations of our work that don't divorce teaching and administration from their intellectual bedrock.